I'm joined now by three MPs from the different parties. Arif Varani is a Liberal MP for the Toronto riding of Parkdale High Park, and he's a Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Justice. Richard Bragdon is a Conservative MP for the New Brunswick riding of Tobik Maktaquak, and he's also Vice Chair of the Commons Fisheries Committee. And Gord Johns is the NDP member for the BC riding of Courtney Alberni, and he's his party's Economic Development, uh, Crown Indigenous Relations and Fisheries critic. All three of you, thanks for joining me. Thanks for Thank having you. us. Can we start with uh, Arif Arani? Can we start with the news that's breaking today, and that is the, this this call by the uh, National Chief of the Assembly of First Nations, Perry Bellegarde, call for Brenda Lucky, the Commissioner of the RCMP, to step down. Um, what do you make of it? Uh, how should how should the government and how should the, the commissioner respond? Well, I think there's a lot of frustration out there, and that frustration is understandable. Obviously, uh, Mr. Bellegarde and uh, the various other uh, Indigenous leaders around the country have every right to express their views and their disappointment in the way the situation has been handled. I think the most glaring thing that this tells me is that, uh, as you've heard the Prime Minister say, systemic racism is not a phenomenon that's unique or the purview of one particular area of Canadian society or one particular institution. It pervades every institution in every area, including law enforcement. The RCMP has to come to terms with that, and that's something that uh, needs to be addressed because the situation has had a number of defects, including uh, the issue with how responsive the, uh, the uh, law enforcement presence has oh. been in that area in terms of protecting Indigenous rights. Okay, but that doesn't sound like a rousing endorsement of the uh, law enforcement presence. Uh, your colleague Mark Miller, the, the Minister of Indigenous Services, said that uh, law enforcement had failed the Indigenous people in the region. You're now saying it's not surprising. That doesn't sound like a round, uh, rounding endorsement of uh, the so commission. Minister Miller is expressing some frustration, and, and I'll say that there are par members of Parliament on all sides of the House that are, are, have expressed some frustration about what's transpired and thinking about the fact that people are trying to exercise a constitutionally protected right. There are concerns uh, uh, being expressed by uh, fishers on both sides of the ledger. Those need to be reconciled, but fundamentally we need to have no violence taking place. We need to have no racial incidents and racism taking place, and it is the role of law law enforcement, including the RCMP, to ensure that people are protected. And when there's cases of alleged arson and people being attacked and assaulted, that is a problem and that is a concern. And that's what's fueling the calls that we're hearing from people like Mr. Bellegarde. Okay, Richard Bragdon, you are in the region, uh, just across the water from that, uh, that in area. You're no doubt attuned to the tensions that are there now. What do you make of all of this? Absolutely, uh, Martin. And we have huge concerns in regards to the fact that the minister and this government have been missing in action from the beginning of this uh, situation. And the fact that we're at this point today and it's reached this crisis level is because for five years, this government has been absent. They have not been proactive in their approach. And we're now into a reactive stage and things have escalated to this point. So it really comes back on the responsibility of this government should be at the table, actively making sure that all parties are there and community stakeholders are part of this process to get this peacefully resolved as quickly as possible. What about when she I, says I, that she has been actively involved in negotiations, but she doesn't want to do those negotiations in public? She says they're ongoing and they're, 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 showing, they're showing positive results. Well, it, uh, the minister is saying that now, but for weeks we call, we've been calling for the minister to get on the ground and be here, get into Nova Scotia and be meeting actively with all key stakeholders. I mean, sometimes there may be a call made here or there. Uh, I don't know all the inside specifics as to what kind of calls are being made or, or, or the specifics of those calls, but I do feel that the engagement has been very limited. And if it is starting to get underway now or with much more urgency, good. But she should have been here long ago. And getting the right people in the room at the right time, as the Liberal Premier of Nova Scotia has been saying that the response so far has been totally inadequate. And we're in this situation because of the delay. Okay, in a word, should the RCMP Commissioner, I want to get to Gord Johns, but should the RCMP Commissioner, Brenda Lucky, should she resign? Well, again, that's for, for the Prime Minister to decide. He appointed uh, this particular individual as, as the Commissioner. I mean, that is for this government to determine who serves in that position and, and for them to make that determination. This falls back onto the Minister and the Prime Minister and the Minister of Public Safety, okay. who have allowed this to get to this stage. Okay, Gord Johns, I want to get your view on this. Watching this all, a call for the resignation of the head of the RCMP, uh, violence, but also now a beefed up police presence. The minister says she is working on a negotiated settlement that will please everyone. Well, let's let's face it, all Canadians and Indigenous people across Canada deserve and have a right to be safe and to be protected. When it comes to what happened at Sebag and Negadi, 
Um, for weeks, we had been identifying and standing in solidarity with Chief Sack and calling for more RCMP as they were facing threats of violence. And e eventually, it came to a peak when the lobster pound was burned, when people were barricaded in, threatened, their lives were threatened, uh, there was destruction of property, cuts were trapped, uh, I mean, traps were cut, uh, and the RCMP stood idle, no enforcement. Yet you see at the Six Nations, they're shooting rubber bullets. We've had months of unrest across the country. The commissioner has cited that she doesn't understand and, and see that there's systemic racism in the RCMP. She's lost trust in, in her minister, as you can clearly hear from Mark Miller. Uh, but at the same time, it's not just about the RCMP commissioner. It's my, much higher than that. The cabinet and the Liberal government has sat idle while the RCMP and policing have failed to protect Indigenous people. And they've had a contrasting approach. Like I said, they sat idle uh, and watched uh, things unfold without bringing in reinforcements, knowing full well that lives could be lost uh, in Nova Scotia. And here they are uh, bringing you know, military-style uh, enforcement whenever Indigenous people are, you know, standing up for their rights or demonstrating and or getting shot at with rubber bullets. It's unacceptable. Okay, I and want to... so I support, EF, I, I do support the AFN. Okay, we only have literally less than three minutes and I want to get just a short answer on this last question. Uh, and I'll start with the government representative on the panel, uh, Arif Arani. What do you say to Canadians when they look at what happened this week? We came within a hair's breadth of seeing the government fall. The government, the Prime Minister, called a, a confidence vote on this conservative motion to create an anti-corruption committee and to look further into the we controversy. Uh, as it turned out, the government survived. It was a vote of confidence. We now have another motion that will be voted on on Monday, and it's not a confidence motion. And uh, the majority of people, uh, the parties uh, and MPs are probably going to vote for it. Uh, Arif Arani, how do you describe to Canadians what happened? We came so close on a confidence motion, and on Monday we'll have a, another motion, which many people say is similar, and it's not a confidence motion. How do you explain that to Canadians? So I explained it simply in this manner, that if you attempt to pass a motion that would paralyze government and uh, render government unable to address the critical needs of Canadians during a pandemic, which is their health and their economic needs, then what you're doing is saying as opposition parties, were they to have passed that motion, that you don't have confidence in the Liberal Party's ability to govern. Thankfully, a majority of parliamentarians with more than one party support uh, elected to show confidence in our ability just to handle the pandemic and address the needs okay. of healthcare needs and the economic needs of Canadians. Richard, That's Richard, the qualitative okay. difference between these two motions. We're running out of time. Richard Bragdon, what do you make of it? How do you explain to people when you go back to your writing uh, one confidence motion and another not a confidence motion? Well, I, again, this is a government that is avoiding responsibility and accountability. They prorogued the House when they didn't need to. Uh, they did it because they didn't want, uh, you know, scrutiny on some really in-depth scandals that needed to have a clear eye and, and opposition be able to play its role in holding the government to account and making sure the taxpayers' dollars would be respected. And this government totally avoided that. They prorogue the House, then they come back, and when we tried to have accountability through the Finance Committee or through the Essex Committee, they, they, they delayed and they... They stalled and they advocated on that. Then, of course, we came up with another committee that would, would try and look into this so that Canadians could get answers to the questions that they have about these scandalous things. And then they threatened to bring their own government down based on that. I, I find that deeply troubling, and I feel many Canadians have grave concerns about this approach of brinkmanship by the government. Okay, Gord Johns, just in a few seconds, what do you make of the, the difference between uh, the uh, Wednesday vote and what vote you're going to have on Monday? Well, well, the fact is that they, they made this a confidence vote, and it shows how disconnected they are. We're heading into the second wave of the pandemic. There are six red zones in this country. Bringing, sending people to the polls would be completely irresponsible. They promised small businesses that they're going to fix their flawed commercial rent program, extend the wage subsidy, help for seniors, all these things that they're promising to bring forward in the coming days, yet they were willing to send us to the polls and delay those supports for months. And, you know, instead of... Uh, you know, helping Canadians right now. They prorogue Parliament, they're filibustering a committee. The Conservatives are just trying to score points. And right now, we're focused completely on helping Canadians get the help they need. And that's what people need right now. They need support during this really difficult time. 
Okay, uh, to all three of you, I want to thank you for, the, for taking your time, and uh, we'll watch that vote on Monday. The non, it's not a confidence vote. We'll watch that vote with, with great interest. Thanks for speaking with us. Thanks for having us. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, thank everyone. you.